the liturgical year of Don Prosper Gauranger, January 2nd, the octave of St. Stephen, the first martyr. Yesterday we finished the octave of the birth of Jesus. Today we shall finish the octave of St. Stephen, but this without losing sight one moment of the divine babe whose court is formed by Stephen, John, the beloved disciple, the holy innocents, and St. Thomas of Canterbury. In five days, we shall see the Magi prostrate before the crib of the newborn king. They are already on the way, and the star is advancing towards Bethlehem. Let us spend the interval in reconsidering how great is the glory of our Emmanuel in his having lavished such extraordinary favors on these saints whom he has chosen to be near him at this first coming into the world. Let us begin with Stephen, for this is the last day of the octave dedicated to him by the church. We must take leave of him now till the month of August, when we shall again meet him on the feast of the finding of his relics. In a sermon which was for a long time thought to have been written by St. Augustine, we find it mentioned that St. Stephen was in the flower of his youth when he was called by the apostles to receive the sacred character of deaconship. Six others were ordained deacons with him, and these seven whose office was to minister at the altar here below, represented the seven angels whom St. John saw standing near the altar in heaven. Stephen was appointed as the head of the seven, and St. Irenaeus, who lived in the second century, calls him the archdeacon. The characteristic virtue of a deacon is fidelity. Hence, he is entrusted with the care of the treasures of the church, treasures which consist not merely in the alms destined for the poor, but in that which is the most precious thing in heaven and earth, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, of which the deacon is the minister in virtue of his order. For this reason, the Apostle St. Paul, in his first epistle to Timothy, bids the deacons hold the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. It was therefore more than appropriate coincidence that the first of all the martyrs was a deacon, for martyrdom is the great proof of fidelity and fidelity is the official virtue of the diaconate. This same truth is still more strongly impressed upon us by the fact that the three who stand preeminent amongst the martyrs of Christ are vested in the holy dalmatic. The three glorious deacons, Stephen, the glory of Jerusalem, Lawrence, the pride of Rome, and Vincent, of whom Spain so justly boasts. The present holy season gives us Stephen, who has been gladding us with his festal presence ever since Christmas Day, and Vincent, whose feast falls on January 22nd. Lawrence will come to us with his rich waving palm in the sunny month of August, and Stephen in the same month will visit us a second time in the feast of the finding of his relics. With the intention of paying respect to the Holy Order of Diaconship in the person of its first representative, it is a custom in the great many churches on the Feast of St. Stephen, that deacons should fulfill every office which is not beyond their order. For example, the chanter yields his staff of office to the deacon. The choristors who assist the chanter are also deacons vested in dalmatics, and the epistle of the Mass is sung by a deacon, because it is the passage from the Acts of the Apostles which relates the history of the holy martyr's death. The institution of St. Stephen's Feast and its being fixed on the day immediately following that of our Lord's birth are so ancient that it is impossible to assign their date. The Apostolic Constitutions, which were compiled at the latest towards the close of the 3rd century, mention this feast as already established and that too on the morrow of Christmas Day. St. Gregory of Nyssa and St. Asterius of Amasia, both of them, earlier than the miraculous discovery of the holy deacon's relics, have left us homilies for the Feast of St. Stephen, in which they lay stress on the circumstance of its having the honor to be kept the very day after the solemnity of Christmas. With regard to its octave, the institution is less ancient, though the date cannot be defined. Amalarius, who wrote in the 9th century, speaks of this octave as already established and Notker's Martyrology, compiled in the 10th century, makes express mention of it. But how comes it that the feast of a mere deacon has been thus honored, while almost all those of the apostles have no octave? The rule followed by the church in her liturgy is to give more or less solemnity to the feasts of the saints 
according to the importance of the services they render to mankind. Thus it is that the honor she pays to St. Jerome, for example, who is only a priest, is more marked than that she gives to a great number of holy popes. It is her gratitude which guides her in assigning to the saints their respective rank in her calendar and the devotion of the faithful to the saintly benefactors, whom she now venerates as members of the church triumphant, is thus regulated by a safe standard. St. Stephen led the way to martyrdom. His example inaugurated that sublime witnessing by the shedding one's own blood, which is the very strength of the church, ratifies the truths she teaches to the world and confirms the hopes of eternal reward promised by those truths. Glory then and honor to the Prince of Martyrs. As long as time shall last, so long shall the church on earth celebrate the name of Stephen, who was the first to shed his blood for the God who died on Calvary. We have already noticed St. Stephen's imitating Jesus by praying for and forgiving his enemies. It is the circumstance which the church continually alludes to in her office of his feast. But there is another very important incident in the martyrdom of our saint, which we must for a moment dwell upon. One of the accomplices in the murder, which was being committed under the walls of Jerusalem, was a young man of the name of Saul. He made himself exceedingly active, for he was of an ardent temperament, and as the fathers observed, he helped every man who stoned the holy deacon, because he took care of the murderer's garments whilst they committed the crime. Not long after, this same Saul, whilst traveling to Damascus, was converted into an apostle of that Jesus whom he had learned Stephen confessed as the Son of God. He was the fruit of Stephen's dying prayer. The blood of Stephen cried to heaven for mercy, and heaven sent to the Gentiles the apostle who would bring them to the knowledge and love of Jesus. What an admirable scene, cries out St. Augustine. Here is Stephen being stoned and Saul taking care of the garments of them that stone him. But this Saul is now Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, and Stephen is the servant of Jesus Christ. Saul, thou hast been prostrated and raised up again, prostrated a persecutor, raised up a preacher. Everywhere are thy epistles read. Everywhere art thou bringing to Christ them that are his enemies. Everywhere art thou the good shepherd, surrounded by a numerous flock. Thou art now reigning with Christ. In company with him thou didst one stone. Both of you are looking upon us. Both of you now hear what I am saying. Do both of you pray also for us. He who crowned you both will hear both. Stephen was a lamb. Saul was a wolf. Now both are lambs, and both will acknowledge us as of the flock of Christ, and will pray for us that the church of their master may be blessed with the peaceful and tranquil life. Stephen and Paul both visit us during this grand season of Christmas, for we shall keep the feast of the conversion of St. Paul on the 25th of January, and thus Stephen leads his spiritual conquest to the crib of their common Lord and Master. Catholic piety has chosen St. Stephen as one of the patrons of a happy death. This choice was suggested by the death of the Holy Martyr, a death so tranquil that the scripture calls it a sleep in spite of the cruel torture to which his executioners put him. Let us, therefore, beg the intercession of St. Stephen for that awful hour of our death when we must return to our Creator these souls of ours. Nay, let us ask him to pray that we may be habitually in such a disposition of mind as to be ever ready to make the total sacrifice of the life which God has given to us. It was a sacred deposit he entrusted to our keeping, and which we were to hold in readiness for him, whensoever he might demand it at our hands. The Mass The introit is composed of the words of the holy martyr who, in the language of the royal psalmist, tells us of the plot formed against him by the wicked and of his own humble confidence in God, whereby he triumphed over their persecutions. From the murder of the innocent Abel to the future martyrs who are to shed their blood in the days of Antichrist, the church is always under persecution. In some one country, she is ever shedding her blood. But her strength lies in her fidelity to Jesus her spouse and in the simplicity which the babe of Bethlehem is come to teach her by his own example. The Introit Princes sat and spoke against me, and sinners persecuted me. 
Help me, O Lord my God, for thy servant hath practiced thy commandments. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Princes sat and spoke against me, and sinners persecuted me. Help me, O Lord my God, for thy strength hath practiced thy commandments. In the colic, the church asked both for herself and her children that divine vigor which makes the holy martyrs forgive their persecutors and perfects not only their testimony to the truth, but also their imitation of Jesus Christ. It speaks the praise of St. Stephen, who was the first to follow our Savior's example. The Colic, O Almighty and Eternal God, who didst consecrate the first fruits of martyrdom in the blood of blessed Stephen the Levite, grant we beseech thee that he may intercede for us, who begged for mercy even for our persecutors of our Lord Jesus Christ thy Son. The Epistles from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6 and 7. In those days, Stephen, full of grace and fortitude, did great wonders and signs among the people. Now there arose some of that which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of them that were of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit that spoke. Now hearing these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed with their teeth at him. But Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looking up steadfastly to heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they, crying out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and with one accord ran violently upon him. And casting him forth without the city, they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, invoking and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling on his knees, he cried with a loud voice, saying, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep in the Lord. Thus, O glorious Prince of Martyrs, thou wast led outside the gates of the city for thy sacrifice, and thy punishment was that of blasphemers. The disciple was to be like to his master in all things, but neither the ignominy of such a death nor its cruelty could daunt thy great soul. Thou didst carry Jesus in thy heart, and with him thou wast stronger than all thy enemies. And what was thy joy when thou sawest the heavens open, and this same Jesus in his glorified humanity, standing at the right hand of God, and looking upon thee with love, a God looking complacently on the creature that is going to die for him, and the creature permitted to behold the God for whom he is dying. Truly, this was more than enough to encourage thee. Let thine enemies cast their stones against thee, and bruise and tear thy flesh as they please. Nothing can distract thee from this sight of the eternal King, who raised himself from his throne to applaud thee, and deck thee with the crown, which he had prepared for thee from all eternity. Now that thou art reigning in the kingdom of heaven, pray for us, that we also may be faithful and faithful even unto death to this same Jesus who not only left his throne, but even came down among us as a little child. The gradual princes sat and spoke against me and the wicked persecuted me. Help me, O Lord my God, save me for thy mercy's sake. Alleluia, alleluia. I see the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of the power of God. Alleluia. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23. At that time, Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, Behold, I send to you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you will put to death and crucify, and some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that upon you may come all the just blood that hath been shed upon the earth, from the blood of Abel the just, even unto the blood of Zacharias, the son of Barachias, whom you killed between the temple and the altar. Amen, I say to you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered together thy children as the hen doth gather her chickens under her wings, and thou wouldest not. Behold, your house shall be left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
the martyrs are given to the world, that they may continue the ministry of Christ on the earth by bearing testimony to his word and by confirming this testimony by their blood. The world has despised them like their divine master. They have shown in the darkness and darkness has not understood their light. Nevertheless, many have received their testimony and the seed of the martyr's blood has brought forth in them the rich fruit of faith. The synagogue was cast off by God for his having shed the blood of Stephen after having imbued its hands in that of Jesus. Unhappy they who cannot appreciate the martyrs. Let us who are Christians take in the sublime lessons taught us by their generous sacrifice and let our respect and love for them testify that we are grateful for the noble ministry they have fulfilled in the church and are still fulfilling. The church is never without martyrs, just as she is never without miracles. It is the twofold testimony that she will give to the end of time and by which she evidences the divine life she has received from her almighty founder. During the offertory, the church once more proclaims the merits and the glorious death of Stephen. And by this, she teaches us that the sacrifice of the holy deacon is united with that of Jesus himself. The offertory, the apostles chose Stephen a Levite, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, whom the Jews stoned, praying and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Hallelujah. The secret, receive, O Lord, these offerings in memory of thy saints, and as their sufferings have made them glorious, so may our devotion render us free from sin. A commemoration of Christmas Day. Sanctify, O Lord, our offerings by the new birth of thine only begotten Son, and cleanse us from the stains of our sins. United in Holy Communion to her divine spouse, the church too sees the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. She sends up to this incarnate word the yearnings of her intense love and derives from the heavenly food she has received that meekness which makes her bear with the injuries and insults put upon her by her enemies in order that she may win them all to the faith and love of Jesus Christ. It was by partaking of this same heavenly food that Stephen got the superhuman strength whereby he won his victory and crown. The communion. I see the heavens open and Jesus standing on the right hand of the power of God. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit and lay not this sin to their charge. The post communion. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, be help to us and by the intercession of the blessed martyr Stephen, strengthen us with thy perpetual protection. Commemoration of Christmas Day. Grant we beseech thee, O Almighty God, that as the Savior of the world, who was born this day, procured for us a divine birth, he may also bestow on us immortality. We will now select from the ancient liturgies a few additional pieces in honor of our saint. We begin with two responsories and the proper collect for this octave day as given in the Roman breviary. Responsories. Stephen, the servant of God, whom the Jew stoned, saw the heavens open, he saw and entered. Blessed man to whom the heavens were opened. While therefore the loud pelting of the storm of stones was beating against him, a divine brightness shone upon him from the ethereal recesses of the heavenly court. Blessed man to whom the heavens were opened. The gates of heaven were thrown open to Stephen, the blessed martyr of Christ, who was the first among the martyrs. And he therefore triumphs in heaven with his crown upon him. For he was the first to pay back to the Savior the death our Savior deigned to suffer for us. And he therefore triumphs in heaven with his crown upon him. The colic, O Almighty and Eternal God, who didst consecrate the first fruits of martyrdom in the blood of blessed Stephen the Levite, grant we beseech thee that he may intercede for us who beg for mercy even for our persecutors, of our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son. The Church of Milan, in its Ambrosian Missal, consecrates this preface to the praise of the Prince of Martyrs. It is truly meet and just, right and available to salvation, that we should always and in all places give thanks to thee, O eternal God, who didst call Stephen to be the first of deacons. He was the first that dedicated unto thee the offering of martyrdom. He was the first to shed his blood for thee. He it was that merited to see the heavens open and the Son standing at the right hand of the Father. He adored Jesus the man-God on earth, and he proclaimed him to be the Son of the Father in heaven. 
He repeated the words of his master, for what Christ said on the cross, that did Stephen teach when shedding his blood in death. Christ on the cross sowed the seed of his pardon, so did Stephen beseech his Lord to have mercy on them that stone him. The same liturgy has the following collect for St. Stephen's feast. O God, the teacher and ruler of them that are thy ministers, who didst adorn the early days of thy church by the ministry and precious blood of blessed Stephen the Levite, grant, we beseech thee, that meeting with pardon at the hour of our death, we may deserve to follow his example and be aided by his intercession through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Gothic Liturgy of Spain gives us in its Mozarabic Missal the following admirable prayer to St. Stephen. Most blessed proto-martyr Stephen, thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord hath named, for that thou, who didst suffer death for him, didst by him receive a crown for thy name, and a crown for thy virtue. Thou wast the first in martyrdom, and first in its reward, first martyr in the world, and the first in the courts of heaven. Here stone for Christ, there exulting in the crown he gave thee. Here thou didst suffer for his sake the most cruel torments. There thou didst receive the most precious crown. Thou, therefore, that wast the first flower of the church, be now her untiring patron, that so by thy prayers, that Jesus, for whose sake thou wast the glorious martyr, may be merciful unto us. The following hymn, remarkable for its unction and simplicity of style, is to be found in most of the ancient Roman French breveries. O holy proto-martyr Stephen, most dear to God, in the virtue of charity wherewith thou wast armed on every side, thou didst beseech the Lord to have mercy on thine enemies. Thou art the standard bearer of heaven's martyred host, the herald of truth, the first witness of Christian grace, the living foundation stone and groundwork of martyrdom. Stones were the instrument of thy martyrdom, not the sword. The sharp-edged stones, like knives of a second circumcision, tore thine innocent flesh, but tingled in thy blood. They were made rubies for thy crown. Thou wast the first to tread the stony, rugged path that leads to heaven. Thou wast the first to breast that sword which had slain our Lord and lost its keen edge by piercing him. Thou wast the earliest winnowed wheat that graced the granaries of Christ. To thee were heaven's gates first opened, showing thee Jesus in his power, for whom thou didst so bravely fight. He, standing at the right hand of his Father's majesty, is with thee incessantly. Pray now for this thy devout people, that our Lord, through thy prayers, may mercifully forgive us our sins and grant us fellowship with the citizens of heaven. Glory and honor to the God who gave thee thy crown of roses and thy throne above the stars. May he free us from the sting of death and save us sinners. Amen. We will close our selection with a sequence composed by Knocker. We find it in the collection of St. Gaul. Let us solemnize this feast in the union of fraternal charity, instructed by the sweet example of its saint who prayed for his guilty persecutors. Hear us, O Stephen, thou standard bearer of the infinitely merciful King, who heard the prayers thou didst offer him for thine enemies. By thy prayers, O Stephen, that very Paul, who once persecuted thee, was converted to believe in Jesus, and now exalts with thee in that kingdom nigh which no persecutors come. Then we who humbly cry to thee for pity and besiege thee with our prayers, we surely shall be reconciled to our God by thy most holy prayers. Peter ordained thee as a minister of Christ, and thou to the faithful Peter didst affirm and show this truth, that he whom the mad populace crucified is at the right hand of the Father. Christ chose thee, O Stephen, as the example whereby he would give courage to his faithful ones. For he showed himself to thee amidst the shower of stones and sweetly consoled thee. Now amidst the red-robed army of the martyrs, thou shinest as the crowned prince. We return thee our grateful thanks, O glorious Stephen, for the help thou hast given us in this great feast of Christmas. It is thy yearly office to initiate us into the sublime mystery of the birth of Jesus. Thy feast ever brings us into the company of this divine child and the church Trust to thy revealing him to the hearts of her children, as thou heretofore didst to the Jews. Thou hast done thy work, dear saint, and here is our faith. We adore this babe of Bethlehem as the word of God. We hail him as our king. We offer ourselves to him to serve him as thou didst. 
we acknowledge his absolute right over us and our obligation of serving him even to the last drop of our blood, should he put our loyalty to that great test. Stephen, the faithful deacon, pray for us that we may have the grace to give our whole heart to Jesus from this time forward, that we may use our best efforts to please him, and that we may conform our lives and affections to his blessed will. Doing this, we shall have the grace to fight his fight, if not before tyrants and persecutors, at least before the base passions of our own hearts. We are the descendants of the martyrs, and the martyrs conquered the world, for Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, had conquered it before them. Shall we then be cowards and re-enslave ourselves to our eternal enemy? Obtain for us also that fraternal charity which pardons every injury and prays for them that hate us and converts sinners and heretics when all means else have failed. O valiant martyr of Jesus, watch over us at the hour of our death. Assist us in our agony. Show us that Jesus, whom thou hast shown us so often as the dear babe of Bethlehem. Show us him then as the glorified and triumphant, but above all as the merciful Jesus, holding in his divine hands the crown he has prepared for us. And may our last words be those which thou didst utter when going to thy God. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit.